All right, today we have got to fix a transmission leak on our 7.3 Power Stroke, and when we get done with that, we've got to fix a coolant leak on our old body style 97 F250, so let's get into it. So here is our 2002 Ford truck, and down here you will see we have got a little bit of a transmission leak. Once the camera adjusts, you can see the case is wet. There's a couple of little droplets on the bottom of the casting there. And after being parked here for a day, it leaves that little maybe quarter-sized wet spot you can see right there. So let's jump up here and I'll show you what's actually leaking. So I can tell looking down here, one, this little boot is absolutely torn right there. So that's got to be a huge part of our problem. And two, I am not the first one to have removed this piece off the transmission, which is kind of interesting. I know this truck has had a clutch put in it before, but I don't understand why they would have had to take this off the transmission instead of just unbolting the shifter like we did there to get it out. We don't have to take the whole transmission out, fortunately, but this is going to turn into what do you do if you strip out a hex head bolt? Because this one over here in the lower passenger corner, right there, stripped out. Oh, that's a bad feeling. Now, a bolt like this stripping out can absolutely be a problem, but something I've had very good luck with is taking a Torx bit of the approximately same size, and I think this one's going to be too small. That's, that's not going to work. Uh, so this one is the next size up, and we are going to have to uh, assist this star-shaped bit in fitting into a small square hole. Well hexagonal hole, whatever. Really trying hard not to hit the dash. I don't want to do that. As I do exactly that. A lot of times a hex bit can bite well enough. Just like that. Beautiful. All right, so here we are over here in the vise, and the shifter assembly just slides out the bottom, like so. Make sure you hold these little plastic blocks in place or they'll fall off. Set that over here to the side. And then this comes out, yeah, this comes out from the inside, I think. Well. Yeah, it did. Let's clean that up and put the new one in. All right, it's all cleaned up. Got our new seal. I'm going to put the new seal in from the top. One thing I want to point out for you guys real quick, if you're going to do this at home, take note, this little cover is labeled front at the front, and it's got a casting number in it on the opposite side. When you're putting the shifter handle back in, make sure it's facing the correct direction. Otherwise, you'll have to take this thing all back apart when you get it completely reassembled and redo it. And that's no fun. You get your little blocks lined up. Slide those back in the slots they want to go in and then slide this down till it snaps in that groove and there we go. So here we are a couple days later out here with the old 450 that we sealed up our transmission leak. And we've put a few hundred miles on it, and if you look, that transmission is just as dry as it gets. So that's a good thing. That one's fixed. So here is our 97 Ford F250 with the 5.8, and I don't know if you can see it real well from up here, but I know you can see it down here. Our water pump is leaking. That green stuff there coming out of that weep hole, that is coolant, and it should not be coming out of that weep hole right there. All right, I'm just gonna pull the belt back over here, out of the way. There we go. Now, fan bolts. I would love to understand why Ford decided to put the water pump bolts behind 
the accessory bracket. I'm not an engineer, but it just feels like this could have been done without that. So the whole reason our accessory bracket over here had to come off is this this bolt right here not only this is not threaded this is just a stud but there's the flats to put a socket on and then it secures the water pump to the engine but it also goes through that hole in that bracket so the whole power steering slash air conditioner bracket had to come off just for that one little bolt so now let's take the rest of these little bolts out All right, there's a the water pump. And there's evidence of a leak. So a lot of people have correctly recommended that I could really use one of those topside creepers to make working on these trucks easier. And I don't disagree at all, but what I run into is working in the garage here, I'm pulled in just where I can barely close the door behind it. I really don't have enough room in front of it to be able to use a topside creeper. I wish I did, but not, not right there. I'm getting these bolts in, but I'm not tightening them all the way down until I've got them all at the very least started. And then everything is getting an incredibly generous coat of anti-seize. Not that you have to be incredibly generous because this stuff ends up, you get out just a tiny bit of it and it ends up on everything within 50 yards anyhow. But because these are steel bolts going through an aluminum water pump into an aluminum timing cover housing, and then some of them even go through that housing into the steel or cast iron or whatever it is block, there is a ton of potential for a phenomenon known as dissimilar metals corrosion, which will cause you a lot of broken bolts and a lot of headache and a lot of hassle if you don't exercise a little bit of care and use some anti-seize when you put this stuff together. Another thing that's never a bad idea is a little bit of anti-seize on the inside of the actual fan hub where it sits on the water pump shaft. That can seize also and make getting this fan out a massive, massive pain should you ever need to. These constant tension clamps are really nice when you can access them easily with a pair of pliers, but that's not always the case even when it seems like it should be. And for those times where you can't access them very easily, that's why we have these. I'll link to this down in the description, but these are cable pliers. They grab onto these clamps, they ratchet to hold them open, and then you just squeeze, put the clamp where it needs to go. So we're down here under the F-250 and it may be hard to see, but there is our new water pump and it is not leaking. So we're gonna call this one fixed. Now that, that was fun. Uh, both the trucks are fixed, or at least those issues are fixed. The 450 needs a little maintenance work. The 250 needs a little maintenance work. One of the fuel pumps went bad. I gotta get that sorted out. But right now, I got an engine to go put together. If you guys wanna see what that is, make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button if you haven't. That really helps with the algorithm. Thank you for watching and more later.